Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss when do the auditors give a qualified opinion or a disclaimer of opinion. Both of these opinion, qualified opinion and disclaimer opinion, are not clean opinion which is unmodified or unqualified. So under what circumstances a clean opinion is not justified? Well, it's very important to understand when do we give a clean opinion? When do we give a clean opinion? Well, we have to have all the financial statements included in the notes. We have collected sufficient appropriate evidence, which is we followed gas. Financial statements are present fairly in accordance with GAAP or the framework that we are using. No circumstances requiring the addition of an emphasis of a matter paragraph or modification. Bear in mind, we can add an explanatory paragraph emphasis of a matter and still give a clean opinion. We could have two issues not allowing us to give an unmodified opinion. We could have a gap issue and we could have a gas issue. The gap issues is called a misstatement. And in the prior session, we look at this. The financial statements have not been prepared in accordance with gap and the auditor disagree. This is the gap issue. The gap issue already covered. And under the gap issue, remember, we can give a qualified, just a reminder, and we can give adverse. And we explain when do we give a qualified, when, they, when we give an adverse. Or we could have gas reasons, generally accepted auditing standard. Here, what we have is what's called the scope limitation. The scope of the audit has been restricted. What do we mean by this? Let's go back to the clean opinion. Under a clean opinion, we said we have to have sufficient appropriate evidence collected to be able to issue an opinion. Well, what happens if we cannot collect that sufficient appropriate evidence? We're going to have a scope limitation. Also, another reason it could be the auditor, the auditor is not independent. If the auditor is not independent, then this is a gas issue. So if it's a gas issue, what type of opinion we can give? For gas, we can give a qualified. Hold on a second. You just said qualified for gap. Yes, it could be a qualified for gap. It could be qualified for gas. And we can give modified under gas. Modified under gas. When do we give a qualified? When do we give modified? Well, it all depends on the severity of the situation and pervasiveness of the evidence collected. So if, it's, if we can live with it, we can give a qualified. If not, we would give a modified. Again, we need to look at more examples and more details. When do we give a qualified? When do we give a modified? Before we look at additional details, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. If we are unable to obtain appropriate sufficient evidence, but the auditor conclude that the possible effect of the material misstatement could be material, so they are material, it's a material, but not severe and pervasive. Again, what is severe or pervasive? Severe or per pervasive means it's affecting the financial statement overall. Well, if that's not the case, then we can live with it. We have a scope limitation, but it's not severe. It's not affecting our judgment for the whole financial statement. Under those circumstances, we would give a qualified opinion. So the issue is material. We cannot collect, obtain appropriate evidence, but not severe. It's limited to a certain area. Under what circumstances? What are some examples? Well, some examples of the scope of limitation is time constraints. We did not have enough time, but we believe we did enough work to be comfortable giving a qualified opinion. And we have to qualify it. Or we are unable to observe inventory. Well, at the beginning of the year, when the company counted the beginning inventory, we were not there. That's okay. We can live with their beginning inventory. But we're going to have to qualify. Maybe we were unable to or cannot confirm account receivable. Maybe the account receivable is not very large. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe we can find alternative procedures. Maybe we can live with it. We can live without 
confirming account receivable because it's confined to a particular area. The, the issue is confined to a particular area. For example, we were unable to obtain an attorney letter, but we can live with that. We don't believe this company is exposed to a lot of lawsuits. We can live with that or to major ones. Accounting record is not adequate. Again, depending on under what circumstances, maybe we can live with that, maybe not. So what? So on the end, in, in the question that you, you, you'll be looking for, was it at the, if it's severe or not severe, severe or pervasive? If, if it is, you have an issue. Now we have to ask ourselves, are we confined or restricted or is management placing restriction, restriction on us? Now bear in mind, if management is placing restricting on us, then we have to be very careful because they could be hiding something. Now, if we did not, ha if we did not have enough time or for technical reasons, we could not absorb inventory, that's different. But if management is refusing, is restricting us, then it's, it's, it's an issue. So if we're restricted by circumstances, that's fine. We can, we can live with that because just by circumstances, we cannot absorb, absorb ending inventory. But if management, if we're asking management and management is refusing, then our, you know, we should raise a lot of red flags on that. So what should we do? The first thing we should do is we should ask management to comply. And if they don't, we should ask the board of directors or the audit committee to put pressure on them. So this is the qualified. When do we give disclaimer? If the issue is material and notice and severe and pervasive. So we could not collect enough evidence and we believe we believe the evidence is affecting the overall financial presentation. It's not limited to one area. Under those circumstances, we disclaim. Remember, not adverse. Remember, adverse is for gap. And again, they try to tr they try to trick you. And that's why I keep repeating adverse is for gap. OK, so we cannot make we cannot collect enough evidence. Therefore, we cannot make a decision. What do we do? We disclaim. So one more time, we disclaim for gas, we give an adverse opinion for gap. And gas, as well as gap, they both have a qualified opinion. So both they could have a qualified opinion, simply put, as long as the issue is confined, whether it's gap or gas, if the issue is confined, we can give a qualified opinion. Now let's take a look at an actual report. Disclaimer of opinion. Well, this is what it looks like. Basically, we have an independent auditor's report. Disclaimer of opinion. We just tell you right there, we are disclaiming. Now we say we are we were engaged to audit because we did the work. That's how we find out we could not collect enough evidence. Remember, this is the introductory paragraph of the unmodified report. That's fine. Here we go. Here's our opinion. We do not express an opinion on the financial statements of Adam Company because of the significance of the matter described for the basis of disclaimer opinion. So we'll, we're going to have a paragraph called basis for disclaimer opinion. And we explain what we could not do. We have not been able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence to provide a basis for the audit opinion. Remember, that's one of the reasons to be able to, to give the users to give the users, it means give the shareholders, the stockholders, the users of the report, a clean opinion, you have to collect evidence. We could not collect evidence. And we will explain what the issue is and the basis for disclaimer. We would still put responsibility of management, responsibility of the auditor. And here we, we put down our responsibility is to conduct an audit of the financial statement according to GAS, generally accepted auditing uh, standards, as well as GAP. And however, because of the matter described of the basis, um, in the basis of the disclaimer of opinion, we were not able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. Again, we emphasize this point. We were not able to obtain appropriate sufficient evidence. We also mentioned that we are independent of Adam Company. So the, the issue is not independence because we could, we could have independence issue. And we're going to talk about this next, but that's not the issue. Under independence, also we would give a modified opinion but the report will be very very short and we're going to see it shortly if the auditor is not independent but is required to issue a report then under those circumstances the auditor will disclaim disclaim an opinion no other reason for disclaiming should be cited simply put once you lack independence then guess what you do you disclaim you don't mention anything about scope limitation if it exists. If you are restricted or not, it doesn't matter. Independence will override scope limitation. Also, you don't mention any audit procedures that the auditor 
undertake. And sometimes what happens is the auditor might have performed all the necessary auditing procedures. Nevertheless, you don't mention anything. No scope limitation, no auditing procedures you performed, whether they were acceptable or not. You don't mention anything. Simply put, you will state the following. We are not independent with respect to Adam Company. Therefore, as a result, we don't express an opinion. It's as simple as that. We don't say anything else. We don't want to bias the perception of the users. We don't also want to bias the perception of the next auditor. Why? Because if you mention anything about scope limitation or auditing procedures were successfully completed, then guess what? You are already biasing their perception and you should not be doing that because you are not independent. Simply put, you would say, I am not independent. I disclaim. As simple as that. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs, true false, to help you understand this topic better. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.